provisions of the open meeting law and allowing us to adhere to social distancing requirements during COVID-19 crisis. This Town of Reading Conservation Commission meeting is being held virtually via Zoom uh, for audio and video participation of conservation commissioners, applicants, representatives, and the public. During this meeting, myself or the chair will unmute commissioners, applicants, representatives, and members of the public individually as needed. During the meeting, the chair will be the only one to permit the sharing of video. These controls are in place to ensure tonight's meeting is being held uh, is safe and effective. At this time, Chair Moore will conduct a roll talk, call vote to confirm all members are present and that they can hear. Okay, and um, Brian. Brian Rowe, Vice Chair, present. John. John Sullivan, member present. Andrew. Andrew Driven, Andrew Driven, member present. Thank you. And that's the order in which we will vote tonight. Uh, thank you, everyone. Please note that this meeting is being recorded um, and also be aware, and I'll return the recording on it as soon as I finish this. It's pretty much all boilerplate. Um, and, and anything that you, uh, and anything that you broadcast may be captured by this recording. All the materials for this meeting are available on the Conservation Division site, and I recommend that Commission members and the public follow the agenda as posted on the Town of Reading webpage unless otherwise noted. However, because this meeting is being conducted remotely, I advise applicants in particular that the Commission cannot discuss or consider documents which were not previously posted. Information, however, may be presented orally. Similarly, members of the public are encouraged to provide written comments, but should understand that not all participants nor the Commission members will be able to see any of these written comments during the course of tonight's meeting. Before we get started on tonight's agenda, I'm going to cover some ground rules for safe and effective conduct of our business to ensure that accurate meeting minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. Half the commissioners have made their remark and these remarks have been addressed by the applicant. The chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will ask for um, who wishes to speak and uh, identify them by names. Once the chair has a list of commentators, the chair will call on each one and afford them four minutes for comments. The applicant may be requested to respond by the chair or the conservation administrator. After public comment, the chair will once again go down the line of commissioners, inviting each one by name to provide any further comments, questions, or motions. Please hold off until your name is called. Finally, each vote tonight um, will be taken as a roll call vote. That's what I have. Okay. Um, and I will call this meeting to order at 7.04 p.m. And um, you're going to start the recording. Yes, I am. Recording in progress. Okay. And the first thing I wanted to do was just um, send a thank you to our select board members who voted last night in favor of the budget request put in by the um, conservation administrator on our behalf. And we are very grateful to have some funds to spend on some important um, things to do with our conservation properties. And thank you to all the members of the Conservation Commission who were able to make it to support that budget. Okay, the first order of business on our agenda is Zero Small Lane, which I understand is to be continued until August 24th. Can I have a motion to continue that hearing, please? I move to continue zero small lane until our next meeting on August 24th. I'll second that. Thank you. And um, I'm gonna make one suggestion for the um, sake of people doing the minutes is when somebody seconds to also give your name as you are seconding the motion. 
um, sometimes it's very hard to catch it on the recording. And, and it's hard to tell who, whose voice we are listening to when somebody says that. So that was seconded by Brian Bow. All right, um, please start voting. Uh, Brian Bow in favor. John Sullivan in favor. Andrew Dribben in favor. Martha Moore in favor. Okay. Our next hearing is for 27 Blueberry Lane and we have um, somebody in the waiting room. Um, are either of the telephone number or Eric Gardner, are either of you um, here to represent 27 Blueberry Lane? Just use the reaction button uh, to raise your hand and let us know. I'm going to ask one more time now that David Caganello has been able to join. If either of you is here for 27 Blueberry Lane, please use the reaction button or anything else down there in the reactions at the bottom of your screen. Aha. Okay, they both are. All right. Uh, hi, who do we have here? I'm going to let you in the meeting in a second. Hi, it's Frank Sorry. Here Go we ahead, Frank, go sir. right here. Okay. You're all set. You can turn your videos on and and unmute. unmute. Hello, yes. Frank Canada. Ah. That's why it's I didn't recognize called Eric Gardner. Okay. Yeah, well, my son does Zoom, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And David, you are the applicant? Yes. yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, okay. Um, so I will read the blurb and then we can get started. 27 Blueberry Lane, open the public hearing on a request for determination of applicability filed by Frank Canada under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, and or the Wedding, Reading Wetland Protection Bylaw, Section 7.1, for demolition of the existing deck and replace it with a new deck. The new deck will be located no closer to the back property than the original deck and will be almost a direct replacement of the existing deck. 28 techno metal posts footings will be needed to support the new deck, helical pile eliminating the need for concrete. All of the work is within the buffer zone to a bordering vegetated wetland. The application and plans can be viewed during regular business hours at the Town Hall Conservation Office, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass, 01867, and on the Conservation Division page under the Project by Year, location 27 Blueberry Lane, Assessor's Map 44, Lot 102, RCC file number 2022-8. Okay. Um, Frank, do you want to present the um, description of the project to us briefly? Um, yeah, sure. They have um, a dilapidated deck in the back there. Um, and we were going to replace, like I, I said, almost a direct replacement. There's a larger section that is um, ledgered off of the house. That's going to grow by two feet. It's going to be 22 by 12. The original deck was 22 by 10. And then the rest of it stays the same. We're just we're just protruding that part out from the house a little tiny bit more, but the rest of it will all just meet up with the pool. The pool sort of sets our. I get some. I get the plans up now. Um, yeah. Maybe this so we, one's better. Yeah, exactly. So this, it was. Can you Chuck? Can you go back to the first one? Sure thing. I I just let you know. I have this plan. I have the one we just looked at, and this one here. Okay, cool. This one here, where it says house, where that's 22 feet long, the 12 foot section on the left, that's where we're gonna grow. The original deck was 10 feet. We're gonna grow there. But, but we can't come out any further than the, the pool still is gonna determine our, our actual physical, um, I don't know what the word, the depth, the length of the pool. The outer edge of the pool from the property line is still going to be, the outer deck of the edge will still be the 51.7 feet it is now from the back property line. 
Okay. And Frank, one other thing uh, as well, I think we're not doing where the hot tub platform used to be, right? So that I think that area is not gonna be kind of, the volume of the deck I think is gonna be less as well in the end, right? Yeah, absolutely. Less yeah. square footage of deck. Right. Okay. Um, we did a site visit the other day. Some members of the commission were there to um, see the area. And does anybody want to talk about what we saw when we were at the site visit? Go ahead, somebody. I can't see Andrew, so I can't tell if he's got his hand up or not. I don't, but I'll 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 take the the bait. Okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, I believe all of us on the video were there, so it was good to have everyone there. We saw where the existing pool used to be. It has since been taken down. You can see the ledger and the remaining um, concrete posts or the concrete footings that were used to hold up the pool. I think you mean the deck. The pool is still there. The pool is still there. I do mean the deck. Uh, the pool's there. It's not being used. We have the, lots of lawn in the backyard. And towards the back of the yard, we have where the resource area begins. And it's a, it's a drainage ditch, right? Am I saying that correct? There wasn't any water in it just because it's been so dry. <clears throat> but um, there was definitely some signs of skunk cabbage along the edge uh, of the back of the property. I, it may not have even been the property. Um, there was a, an old rock wall behind there. I'm just going off memory now. I, don't, I didn't really take notes, to be honest. Um, and it seems from a, a rough sense that where the resource area began, um, we didn't have a tape measure, but it was well, not well, it was beyond 35 feet to the edge of the pool. So I think we're dealing with um, a deck that is outside of the 35 foot buffer zone from the resource area. Um, and I think that's the important piece of information. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything to contribute to that description? Okay. Um, I did notice that there is a play structure um, toward the back edge of the property. Um, not really visible in this aerial view. It's kind of under those pine trees. Um, yeah, about there. Um, and the homeowner is suggesting that that play structure has uh, outlived its useful life and he's planning to have it removed at the same time that he removes the um, deck pieces. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Um, and um, what else did I notice? There is a fenced area um, that probably does get less than um, 35 feet from the wetland line and it's on the in this picture it's toward the left coming off that corner of the house yeah that's the you can see the fence line there um uh i was pleased to note that there is um a row of vegetation trees and shrubs and things like that going along most of the back of the property boundary so that there is a bit of a buffer between the lawn and the um stream um, there's a, a little bit of a gap in the middle, kind of just behind the pool. But um, other than that, there's a nice um, vegetation buffer, um, mostly native plants, um, quite a bit of poison ivy, and a little bit of buckthorn. Um, okay, so that's the observations I have. Um, I do have a question, but does anybody else on the committee have questions to ask the builder or the homeowner? I, I do, Martha. Okay, Brian. I was gonna ask about the play structure, but you beat me to it. Um, so one question I have left is, uh, we got a number of different plans. The one labeled site access and erosion control. Um, I don't know if you have that, Chuck, or not, but um, there's uh, the driveway is drawn in on the lower left part of the uh, plan, <clears throat> and there's a scratched out part at the top of that. Is that just uh, 
where you uh, wrote down the dumpster originally and then scratched it out? Because I don't know what that scratch out is. Yeah, I just um, I just wrote over the top of it. I'm terribly slo sloppy and sorry, but the 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 basic plan is to not go anywhere outside of the pool area itself. So that's why I drew that pink line. Right. It's going to be we will stay inside of that line and all of our dumpster, our staging area, the bulk of our cutting is going to be done on the foot of their driveway there. Okay. Um, and I was just trying to show that we were going to, you know, take care of, you know, okay. be mindful of where we were and what we were and, doing. and there's a label with a line pointing to that scratch zone area. I just not it sure. It looks like it says building stockpile. Is that what you're talking about, Brian? Yeah, right. exactly. It's just identified it. I didn't necessarily scratch it out. I just tried to to identify okay. it. So that's materials thing. going into the deck when you start building it. Yeah, those are new materials. Yep. Okay. Um, that's all I had. I'll set my right Um, I just had one question, which is what are your plans for the existing cement um, foundations for the old posts? When you put in your net, net new techno posts, what are you going to do with the old cement post? Back well, we basically? have, sorry. I'm sorry, Martha. Um, we have offset where we plan on leaving them in the ground. I, I don't want to dig anything. I don't want to disturb anything. These techno metal posts are quite, quite cool. They nobody digs a hole. They twist them and push them right into the ground. And we're just gonna we're gonna go right next to it and use cantilevers and and overhangs to to get us in the right spot so that we're underneath um, and we don't have to mess with the concrete. Okay. So less digging is good. Yeah, we, we, there won't be a shovel here. I don't know if you guys have seen the machine, but it, it's quite small. It runs on tracks and it, uh, it's about the size of your, size of your snow blower. It, mm. they're, 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 they're really, really cool. Okay. Um, any other members of the Conservation Commission, any questions? Okay, how about Chuck? Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, I had a question about the erosion control, uh, wh what do you intend to use for that? That looks like you've depicted hay bale. Well, I mean, I, Chuck, what I want to do, my plan is to just get the, I definitely don't want to use the silk screen because for that to work properly, you have to cut it in. And that, again, I, I just don't want to dig anything. So what I wanted to use was the, um, the, uh, the biodegradable straw, like the, what's it called, waffle straw in the bales. And I really just want to run that around our work area and around the driveway. I don't, I don't really, I, my pink line there was just, we're going to stay off of it. I don't, we're not digging anything or I, I was trying to avoid laying a bunch of stuff over their grass and being more destructive than we need to do. But, you know, we can put up and maintain whatever you guys like. Um, I just, I so that comes on, in like in a 25 foot roll. Yes, exactly. I want to run it from the perimeter of the driveway and just close off the debris from the dumpster and from our stockpile from getting down into, to the site. The rest of it, I just don't want to, I just want to stay off of it. We'll put stakes out there and make sure nobody goes out past that point. Yeah. Let me know though, Chuck. Um, I, I was going to ask you, what is the work in this area here where it says 10 and 22, and then it's it's got the brown up where it says pool and something? Yeah, I mean, that's that that's a the, the 10 by 22 is now going to be 12 by 22. That's the bigger part of the deck. Yeah. And then and then off the corner is the 10 by 12 and then the small leg. So like I said, we're going to work. We're going to keep our work area right close to the house. So that's right here? Or it's is that? Lower, P27. Right, right P28. here. They're in there. Yep. And I'm guessing you don't have any erosion control along the side of the pool because the pool is providing the erosion control in that area. 
Yeah, that was sort of my point. I didn't want to overdo it um, because they have, you know, I, I just didn't see the need to overdo it. I want to take care of, you know, around the pool area and make sure that we stay back close to the house was going to be, you know, my plan. Yeah, it's just, I, uh, it's to me, if it's needed over by the driveway, I think you're doing as much work on the other side. Um, that straw waddle is pretty light and you stake it in. Yeah, if, you can't. Yeah. yeah, if you, uh, I, I mean, I, th I think I still would have you put it, um, I guess, where you've, where you've shown on the plan. Okay. Yeah, and we'll maintain it and take good care of it after it rains. We'll we'll go do do the necessary things to make sure it's actually functioning. That's not a problem. Yeah, I'm trying to find a go. Oh, here it is. Um, so you just show it here, and then up in this up in this other area we we're just talking about. It seems to me that both areas um, have about the same amount of uh, or and need for it. Uh, it it. You know, I could be convinced to um, just throw in some orange fencing up in the other area just to keep people off the lawn, but I think it needs something. Um, yeah, I mean, so, it's, it's okay. unlikely to have. I mean, I think we're talking about a barrier here. I don't think we're talking about erosion based on the um, yeah. helical piles that you're putting in. So Look, I don't see where you're concerned about. Can you squiggle with your yeah. 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 No. This is. Um, I get some new things here. So I guess there's this area here, and then we have this area up here. And he's showing erosion control in both of those areas. <clears throat> but he doesn't want to do this area. Yeah. I just. I mean. I. But like I said, my thought was, you know, the stuff going into the dumpster and then water running through. The, I just wanted to protect that, and then. And and the rest of it, I like I, like you said, Chuck. I just wanted to put up a barrier so there's no foot traffic. Nobody's cutting out there. There's no no do, nothing going outside that area. Um, so, but, um, Frank, um, the two places that Chuck has highlighted, are you planning to erosion control both of those pink stripes? Uh, we're gonna do uh, the 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 red stripe. On the top of the screen, I just want to do a fence there, snow fencing. Ah. And, then, and then the same, I want to do the same thing to the driveway. And then in front of the driveway where that pink line hooks around, that's where I wanted to put the erosion control. Like okay, I said, so just to stop the stuff, because we're going to do a lot of our cutting there and the stuff's going to go to the dumpster there and we're going to set up right there. So I just thought it was... Um, so every place that has little rectangles is only snow fencing. Yes. And then the mulch sock or straw wattle is just around where you have building stockpile. And where the dumpster is. And we're going to do, like I said, the bulk of our cutting and work will be done there and we'll, you know, carry it over. And obviously some work has to be done over on the site, but yeah, that's our plan. Okay, I understand what you're proposing now. Um, Chuck, do you feel that the fencing will be adequate erosion control given that they're not digging? Or do you think we need a uh, straw wattle in both areas? It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's a uh, money question because I think they're both about the same. Um, You know, I would, I would, this is going to get the most activity on this side. I would put the 20, you're going to buy it in a 25 foot length. You might as well put that there. And if you want to put fence up there also, it's fine. I'm only going to require that there's this erosion control, which is pretty small stuff. It's like six inch, but it's kind of flat anyways. Um, and up here, you can put in your fencing. Uh, I think that would be fine. Yeah. Any comments from members of the commission? Yeah. <laughs> it's, this is uh, Andy. Uh, if I could add the part by the driveway, Chuck, I agree for erosion control and turning a corner a little bit past the pink. 
uh, makes sense, it's just so we're any runoff from the dumpster uh, and anything from there will hopefully get caught by the erosion control. And mm -hmm. I'm just wondering about this. So if I'm understanding what we're being proposed, it's going to be a fence on the other side of the pool so that the really just an attempt to contain all the work on the inside of the pool. But I'm just wondering if you're going to want access to go behind the pool. So to, should the fence go more? I know you're trying to minimize damage, but if I were working on this myself, I could just see wanting to get behind that pool, especially as you get towards the walkway there to get the work done. I mean, if if you don't agree, if you think you could get it all done from the inside without it being too uh, too annoying, then fine. But I don't know. I, I think you, you probably want to get in from behind there at times as well. So to me, this is where postcode is just comes down to erosion control. I think that is the big question. I appreciate that you're trying to stay as far away from the the wetland area as possible, but uh, it does seem like it might be more make more sense to just pull that fence up behind the pool and have a, a whole area behind there to be able to walk and get to, to what you need to do. But you know what you're doing, so if you think that you do without it, then that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I think I totally get what you're saying because the deck's going to get built at a certain point. Um, but I, my, again, my, my thing here is not to trash their yard and, and I've built a few things. And I think if you keep, if you keep that, that path, the same, you'll, I just don't want to do any more damage to their yard or the environment in, in general. So I, I think we can just make this work. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. This is okay for me. Sounds good. Cool. Um, are there any members of the public here? I don't think there are. So we don't need to allow for public comments. Um, any last questions, comments on this project? My, no, I mean, my only comments, this is Andy again, is just, uh, I'm glad you're here, David, to talk about this. Uh, you, you know now that you are within the, the drainage, which I guess is considered a riverfront, um, and you're pretty close. So just if you do any future projects, just you know that you're getting close to that wetland resource area in your backyard. And we're here to hopefully help and not make things harder. Yeah, no, great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. And um, I will comment that I did not see any place where there were leaves dumped in the wetland resource area, which is an amazing. Um, thing. Maybe I missed them, but it looks like you guys have been doing a good job of sending your leaves off to the town compost or somewhere and not taking the uh, the woods in the back as a dumping place. So um, congratulations on that. Um, yeah, thank you. That's one of the things we often notice when we're out on site visits is that people have been emptying the lawnmower into the wetland and things like that. So yeah. um, and we discourage that. Um, we want to keep the wetland open to, to provide its flood control and other um, ecosystem services. Okay. Um, are we ready for a motion? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for 27 Blueberry Lane. Second by Brian Bowe. Second by Brian Bowe, and we'll vote. Brian Bowe in favor. John Sullivan in favor. Andrew Driven in favor. Martha Moore in favor. Okay, and then in order to allow them to do their project, we need a negative determination of applicability. Can someone make a motion in that? I will, I will make a motion for 27 Blueberry Lane for the request for determination of applicability uh, is a negative determination. Seconded by Brian Bowe. And voting. Brian Bowe in favor. John Sullivan in favor. Andrew Driven in favor. Martha Moore in favor. All right, you guys right. Can build your pool deck. Thank, Thank you so you much. much. Yeah, Thank so you, you have a, the building permit. Um, so the building permit is uh, in the town hall at this moment. Um, and when were you going to 
try to pick that up next week. Yeah, I got a busy couple of days here. I'll go in and see Glenn on Monday. I'll go see him Monday morning. Okay. Um, yeah, see me too. And uh, we can just go over the erosion control a little bit better just so I, we get it in place. Even though we discussed it tonight, uh, changing the erosion control is something that the that I can do when I go out there. And so can the commission members if they feel like less or more is needed. So uh, I just wanna make sure that we understand what, where it's going. All right. Sounds good. Chuck, thank you so much for all your oh, help. No. I'm very grateful. Thank yeah. you everybody. You're welcome. And uh, as uh, Angie said, I hope, I hope it was uh, not a burden and uh, just got you through as quick as possible. Yeah, I, I want things to be protected. So it's fine, you know, thank you guys. Okay. Thank you. No, bye now. Thank Good you. night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Okay. All right. Our next item on the agenda is 550 West Street. And I understand that they have asked to continue. Is that correct, Chuck? Yes, they'd like to continue. Um, and uh, they're just going to, they want to come back to the next meeting and discuss this with us one more time. I don't, think that um, it would go any further than that at the next meeting. So uh, they'd like to continue tonight and move forward. Okay, so can I have a motion for that? I'll make a motion to continue 550 West Street to August 24th. Uh, I'll second that and by Andrew Driven. Thank you. Brian Bowen in favor. John Sullivan in favor. Andrew in favor. Martha Moore in favor. Okay. Great. Moving right along. Number four, 31 Harold Ave. I understand they have also asked to continue. Yes, Harold Ave uh, left our meeting at, uh, at our last meeting and said they were going to retain a lawyer and ask a few questions. And I don't think that they had got to the point where they felt like they could come back and talk to the Conservation Commission. So they've asked to continue to the 24th. With that, then I will make a motion that we continue 31 Harrow Ave until August 24th. John Sullivan seconds. Brian Bow in favor. John Sullivan in favor. Andrew Driven in favor. Martha Moore in favor. Okay. Um, we are on to old new business. So Chuck, I will turn the meeting over to you. Well, what a great select board meeting we had last night. The first thing on our old new business is the budget request. And um, everyone spoke, uh, we're all there. And um, I guess we did such a good job that uh, we got a little extra for it. And so we have a little bit more in our fund to do some extra things this year. So there's uh, $500 not accounted for. And maybe we wanna think about that um, moving forward or we might uh, have that money on, but I'd like to let you know that we've already started moving forward on that second sign for um, Pearl Street for the parking area to uh, Bear Meadow Conservation Land. So that was uh, a good thing. Brian, I don't know, or Martha, Andrew, do you have anything to say about the meeting? I, th I think that the select board was um, very happy to see us and certainly accommodated. No, just thank you all for staying up late and being at the meeting, appreciate it. Yeah, and, and I think they were very complimentary to Chuck for the other projects that have been going on this summer including how quickly he acted on the ARPA funds to paint Matera Cabin and build some trails, Pinevale especially, um, using the help from Next Step Ministries. So we're very grateful to Next Step Ministries and to the ARPA Fund Committee for providing those needed funds. And um, yeah. there was a comment by Jackie McCarthy that she feels like the new sign at Matera Cabin makes the whole approach to that cabin much safer because it really stands out and you can see where you're supposed to turn. You're not slowing down and um, peering to try to find the entrance to the um, conservation area there. Right. 
right? And if anyone hasn't been uh, here tonight or listening, or listening in the future, if you haven't been to Pinevale in the last couple of weeks, certainly go back again. There's 150 feet of new boardwalk over there. It's not as treacherous as it used to be. Uh, it's an enjoyable four foot wide, 150 foot long um, boardwalk through uh, a wet uh, a wet section of you know the swamp that's out there and the the wetlands. And um, there's some more trail leading up to it and uh, leading away from it after you step off. So it's changed and the um, trails committee already have a, a date plan to do some more trail work out there in October. So by the end of the summer, hopefully we have closer to 200 feet of boardwalk. There's, there's a lot more needed out there, probably close to 300. We may not finish it this year, but it could be possible. And I um, noticed that the the new Matera cabin sign looks very similar to the sign at Town Hall and at the entrance to the Birch Meadow Complex, as well as similar to the DPW sign. So um, Chuck has brought our sign in line with the other signs in town. That's right. Yep, they did a great job on those signs. No sense in uh, reinventing the wheel. I think that was kind of our theme here in town. Uh, a lot of work went into those first couple of signs. So we just uh, basically copied it. Uh, next on the agenda is 1505 Main Street. I did an update at the last meeting about how the um, bonds could be dispersed. I did contact um, Cam and at 1503 and he understands and they're gonna move forward with um, with the work that they had proposed and getting the certificate of compliance. And then when that is finished off, they'll uh, petition the commission to have the bond funds returned to them as uh, directed by town council. And uh, violations, anything? Brian, uh, did we update last time? I'm not sure because we went to 30 Bond Street. I took that off the agenda. Right. So we did talk about that last time. I guess the only new one, um, I've written the letter for Henzi uh, in the middle. You just got it late this afternoon, so I doubt it's not out or anything yet. And <clears throat> that's a follow up letter to one we did back in April. And then additionally, uh, Martha noticed something about the homeowner north of 1102 Main Street. And so <clears throat> we're talking about uh, if and how to uh, write a letter to them talking about their situation. I think those are the only updates, right, Chuck? Yeah, Hensie's out. Uh, we got that out uh, right. with the mail. Uh, so the mail goes out around three. So we had just enough time. And again, that's probably good enough if we're gonna grab those two. Next on the agenda is the distant update on RMLD. We haven't heard from them to set up a meeting. I'm as the next item is the DPW meeting and we need to talk to Mike Hannaford about the RMD, RMLD. Um, integrated vegetation management plan and maybe some next steps that can happen. So um, I'm at a loss at how to get them to the table if they don't want to come and, and talk to us. But uh, I know that we won't be approving any of their work unless we, uh, you know, get some cooperation on that permit. And Mike Hannaford, I don't think he's letting them work in town at this point either. So that's the update. Um, volunteer workers have left town, the, the, um, the Next Step Ministry group, and their, all their workers have moved on. The summer's over, and we brought them to Cal's Creamery and let them eat some ice cream and took some pictures, and we have those posted on the, our website. And you can see uh, our liaison, Karen Herrick, with them. Karen Herrick actually uh, paid for everyone to have an ice cream that day and um, was there. And uh, it was great. Everyone was very happy. They felt 
um, like they had accomplished something. I mean, 150 feet of boardwalk is a tremendous amount of work. And it wasn't just this one group, it was each group was able to start on a section and finish it before the end of the end of the week. And they basically work between nine and two, Monday through Thursday. So I was pretty impressed with them. Uh, and just moving on quickly, no correspondence, no emergency permits. The enforcement for 445 Pearl Street, um, um, Thor wanted to reach out to the owner one more time. So I allowed him that opportunity. I uh, will connect back again next week and find out uh, what, what to do, but um, we're either gonna be starting that project soon or the commission is gonna have to get back involved with uh, some enforcement action. Well, Chuck, as far as Pearl Street goes, I did go by two times and there was nobody home either time. So no progress from my perspective on that one. Okay. Uh, no bills. And um, the next thing is the minutes and I'll turn it back over to Martha Moore for the minutes. Actually, before you do it, Chuck, um, the list of trees that we oh, got from Mike thank Hannaford, you. what's happening mm -hmm. with that? You're all set. Okay, great. I'll uh, let Mike know. I'm glad you brought that up. I had been meaning to ask you for the last couple of days. Oh, All right, so I, th I thought I said it was annoying. I thought I already indicated that, but I, I guess I just said, here's the ones I touched, so okay. Yeah, and I looked at a couple more trees on, on the list, ones that Brian had not gotten to, and it was very clear that those trees were in bad shape, the ones I looked at. Um, and sure. it gave me a good comparison to other people who are, asking to cut down trees. Um, exactly. It's interesting to compare what yes. they, the ones on Mike's list look like. Um, I especially went into the Charles Lawn Cemetery and looked at the um, allianthus trees that are um, growing along the edge of the stream. And he has planted quite a few trees in Charles Lawn Cemetery that he's trying to protect. Um, Okay, so you're gonna let him know that we're okay with him taking down the trees on his list or trimming them as appropriate. We approve the list as, as noted, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I saw that um, Chuck sent us all the minutes for July 13th. Um, did anybody have any comments or changes they need to make on those minutes that have not been sent to Chuck already? I don't. I, I will say, um, I think I learned something from the format. I found it much more concise than uh, the version I did recently. So uh, any future one I do, I'm going to be trying to emulate that one. <laughs> it was a, it was a one hour meeting. It was um, mm. still, still worked better than the, uh, the tome that I wrote. That was the only question I had is, I thought it was one hour, but the, the meeting minutes say it was adjourned at 8.56, which may have been right. I don't remember. But. Yeah, so um, that is that was all in the video. I had reviewed the video and uh, Martha said what time we started. So I had that. And I think that was ended at that the right time. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so there was, I, there was no guessing and I, so I'm, I'm sure it was in there. Yeah. But other than that, it looks good. Okay. All right. So can I have a motion to approve the minutes of July 13th? So move. Move. approve the July 13th minutes. I'll second that. Andrew Driven seconds that. Brian Bow in favor. John Sullivan in favor. Andrew Driven in favor. Martha Moore in favor. Okay, and then Brian did the minutes for July 27th, and I sent him a correction on how to spell artists. Um, but other than that, <laughs> I didn't have any issues. Um, I get the same else? thing from uh, from uh, Julie every single, she goes, it's artist, not artist. I, I actually thought it was artist, like the painter. So uh, no, it's, it's an acronym. 
Yeah. It's an acronym and I forget what it stands for, but yeah, there's no T on the end. So I've made that change. Do I just send that to whom? To you, Chuck, or what? If that's the only change, uh, yeah, you can make the change and send send them to me, uh, okay. or I can make the change. Uh, actually, I made a couple of uh, typo edits myself, so I'll send you the uh, the update. Okay. And then any, for any other second, comments? Well, thanks for doing this. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to confirm that since we're listing them out in the meeting minutes, that the trees that Brian listed are those, because what I wrote down from what you said, Martha, there's like maybe one tree that doesn't kind of align. So have you read it, Martha, and that did the tree list that he had marked on there align with what you said? I think that's a different topic, Andrew. We're talking about the list that uh, Mike Hannigan gave us from DPW. Are we talking about the meeting minutes? For oh, I'm sorry. The July last meeting, July 27th. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Right now we're on the July 27th meeting minutes. Yeah. So and what like, what tree list are you talking about in those minutes? It's for 550 West, and then Brian listed out the 16714. There's a little note in there that there's some discrepancy there. 19, 20, 21, 25, 28. 37, 42, 43, 44, 46, and 50. When I wrote them down, I and you were probably taking this from the video, so that's right. But I wrote down 23. I don't know if that was on your list or not. And then um, for Maureen, you had written her, she said, wanted us to just reconsider 30, 32, 34, 41, and 40. And I think she also said 45. All right. These are details. I don't know if it matters. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it wasn't done the video, but. Oh, you only heard 40, so I made yeah. it 45. All right, it's just what I wrote down. Right, so, yeah. so that that uh, particular project's not complete anyway, so I'm sure we're going to revisit it. Yeah, I know, just <clears throat> if we're going to detail it in the minutes, wanted yeah. it to be accurate. So your question were tree number 13 and number 45, is that right? From yours, did you say 23 was on your list? Oh, 23. Um, 23, ah, um, their number 23 is among the two that they've marked as don't remove. So I did so, not put it on my list because okay. they marked it don't remove. Okay. But yeah. unfortunately, it's one of the ones that's misnumbered in the field. Okay. So there's a little issue with that. All right. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, yeah, and 45, I didn't see, I didn't mark that down as one that Maureen mentioned. Okay. Oh, my God. I found my list, too, <laughs> if anyone wants to go over it. I'm late, I know. <laughs> What'd you say, 45? Yeah. Not marked on mine. Okay. Maureen had, I checked off Maureen. She had 30, 32, 34, 40, 41. Okay. And let me turn on the page just to make sure. That's that's what I have. That's what I have. And they didn't want to do, would you say 23? Yeah, so 22 and 23, I have no next to. And then 24, it says dead, but don't cut. Right, because yeah. that's really close to the river. It's really far away from the house as it is marked in the field, not as it is marked on the plot plan. Right. And there was the one that was 38 that Maureen said it has rot, but we couldn't find it. Right. So I don't know if all that was in the minutes. Um, we didn't talk about 38 in the meeting. So, so we could just make a, um, a change right now and then they could get into the minutes if you wanted to put those in in any more detail. No, I, okay. I vote we, we discuss it at the next meeting. If we're gonna talk about 38, talk about it when the homeowner is here. Yeah. Okay. And then it's fine. Okay, all right. So can I have a motion to accept the minutes from July 27th? I will move to accept the minutes from July 27th. John Sullivan seconds. 
Brian Bow in favor. John Sullivan in favor. Andrew Driven in favor. Martha Moore in favor. Oh. Okay. And I only finished the minutes from November 20, November 10th, 2021 today. So I don't think you guys have had enough time to look them over. But um, if I have sent them to you, if you guys will look them over before our next meeting, we can approve them at the next meeting. Chuck has offered to do the minutes for this meeting, and we can approve those at the next meeting, I hope, and we will be all caught up on minutes. He's really taking one for the team on this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's like if you rake the yard, I'll, I'll buy you ice cream. So if you guys get us out every time under an hour, I'll do the minutes. Yeah, we got nine minutes to go. Okay, anything else on the agenda we need to deal with tonight? Uh, no, I, 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 nope, I think we're, I don't think there's anything going on, um, here. It was like after the last night's select board meeting, it felt that that <coughs> big stack of things that we wanted to do was finished finally. And, um, I have to get a hold of Audubon and see what that, where that money is, um, and see if they're they're available. That's the opera money. That's in the opera money. And we have to find out about that. So of course there'll be another meeting at some point. Is that All the right. bare meadow study? That's the bare meadow study, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it uh, just so you know, I constantly get we mow that once a year. So I and meadow practices is that it would be kind of like a rotating mowing. Like maybe you might do the lower field one year and the upper field the following year, but never at the same time. But we're just doing it once a year. And I get a lot of calls at the end of the season and people just kind of going crazy over the fact that the, the grasses are so high. But I, I think that we're doing a good job over there. What I've heard is there's, it's basically um, big enough for one mating pair of woodcock and there's three in that area so nice yeah yeah it's, it's it's decent yeah it's it's real decent um but i'd like i can't wait for the study to find out what you know the next some of the next things that we're going to do over there um i did uh, this is going to end up going more i'll see if i can do it quickly hold on a second um there is two signs that we're going to take down just to make sure that you guys are okay with that. And they are at Franklin Street and Fairchild. Can't send you a picture. Well, I can send you a picture, but I can't show you. But it's that scout sign um, that's made up by four by fours and the planks across, and someone carved into them. And the very top uh, board has been rotted away, so it's missing a lot. Um, we reached out to the scouts and asked them uh, what they, how they felt about us removing them, and they were okay. And I just wanted to make sure that you guys were okay. And the one at Kirchian seems to be the worst. This would be, these signs are not proposed to be replaced because there are, there are either other signs there or it didn't get on our list. So they're just going to be taken down. So the Kirchian sign is one. I, I'll send you the information tomorrow. If you felt so inclined, you can go and take a look. And um, yeah, they're pretty bad. Also, it's the one same one at um, the Pearl Street entrance to uh, Bear Meadow. Okay, so they're going to be taken down and disposed of. Yeah. And we're replacing the Pearl Street entrance one with a new red sign. New sign like the front of uh, Matera Cabin, just like that. It's not going to be as big. It's We were talking about a size, something around two foot high, up no more than three foot wide. Um, probably just low to the ground on a 
two posts on either end, not not um, granite, but maybe um, iron or poles or whatever, something um, that's not going to rot. I noticed the sign at the corner of Birch Meadow Drive and Main Street is the same style, but does not have the granite posts. So maybe you could take a look at that one and see if the posts could match that. I think they're just metal, maybe they're black. It's the sign for the high school? Yeah, it directs you to the high school, to Coolidge, to the Bur Burbank Y, everything, right out there at the corner. Yeah, where the so traffic guard stands. Our, our plan was to contact the sign manufacturer and ask for a brochure, um, but we'll, we have a site visit. Uh, plan for tomorrow to go and look and I'll just it's on the way so cool. we need to see what it looks like we also have to reach out to Bob Hayes an ex uh, conservation member who lives on one side of the Pearl Street entrance and that other person on the other side just to make sure that they're aware of what's going on okay um I noticed that the Matera cabin sign that was removed to replace it with the red one with the granite posts small white sign is lying on the ground next to the driveway. I wonder if when you're up there in that area, somebody could toss that in the back of their pickup truck and take it away. Yes, that's, there's a list of stuff. Now that the uh, volunteers have gone, there's a little bit of cleanup around town. I'm not saying that that's what was their deal, but um, that's been there for a couple of weeks and uh, the DPW wanted it or it would have been thrown away already. They just want the sign. They don't want the two poles on it. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn this meeting. 758. Okay. I do it. just wanted that for the minutes. <laughs> yes. All yeah, in favor? <clears throat> it has to be seconded. It has to be seconded. John Sullivan seconds. Brian okay. Moore in favor. Martha Moore in favor. Andrew Driven in favor. All right. Thank John you, guys. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. See you later. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Bye now. All right. Thank you.